Clue. So, okay. so we should probably introduce ourselves. Okay, I'm Roxy. I'm Corey. Wait, I'm Corey. She's Roxy. Um, and we're going to be doing a random six-pack assortment of beers we've never had and tasting them and telling the camera, telling the world. The entire world. And reacting to these six beers, which we grabbed willy just nilly. Willy nilly. Just that was our criteria, was willy, and then below that was nilly. So we grabbed six different kinds, and neither of us have ever had them. We have a Lagunitas Pills, Schlafly Pale Ale, Casey Beer uh, Bach Amber Lager. Amber Bach Lager. Dyslexic beer for dyslexic beer. Stone IPA. A long Route Peanut Butter Porter. And lastly, Sippin' Pretty Fruited Sour. We're getting started with the Lagunitas Pilsner. Okay. A Czech-style Pilsner. I don't okay. know enough about beer to know what that means. So We're going to check what a Czech-style Pilsner is. You're fired. Style. Can't fire me. This is my own house. <laughs> Yes. Oh, yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah, so a little, you can kind of see it a little better. Yeah, so we'll keep that that on the ready. So from what I've heard is so, that, like, the foam needs to look rocky. Like, it's not one single level of foam. And this we're is, definitely this getting is rocky. definitely then. doing that. Yeah. It smells like very drinkable beer. Yeah. It's got a little bit of hoppiness to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that a lot. It's Ooh. it's sort of like a pills wanted to grow up to be an IPA. Yeah, it's got a little bit it's of the, a uh, little bit the of bitterness that an IPA does. Yeah, life is uncertain. Don't sip. Okay, chug. No, well, you heard it here for, first. One, for, first one. <laughs> I like the bubble level mm. a lot. <laughs> Sometimes with pills, it's almost like. They walk a fine line between being like flat and being like so bubbly it like hurts your tongue. It's a good crispness. Crispness. It's, it's my problem I have with a lot of beers is that like they'll describe themselves as wet and that typically comes across as flat. Yes. And just very much like kind of immediately just coats your mouth. Yeah. But this doesn't do that. This is very good. I'm getting like a lot of hoppiness. Like this makes me like I like IPAs and this is like. This is like a pills for an IPA drinker. Usually, I think like when I think of pills, I think of like something you get at a baseball game. Oh yeah, that's this like, is an outside beer. Yes, this is something you want to be out in the sun drinking. Yeah, somebody's going to a campfire, but they only drink IPAs. Give them this. If you invited a hipster to to your yes. camping trip, get a better life. First off, <laughs> get better friends. They will only bring you misery. The only thing flavor profile I'm really getting is kind of a pepper. I'm not getting a whole lot of, like, fruit or... I'm not really into pepperiness. Czech-style pilsners are mod moderately tinted pale yellow yep. with low to medium noble hop presence. Good Slightly hops. sweet toasted biscuit and bready aromas and flavors as well as moderate to low carbonation. Bready. That's that's a good way to bready. put this. I'm not getting, like, a breadiness out of this. Man, I think I'm too set in my mind about this right now. I get, I get some bread. Mm-hmm bready notes yeah mm. it's not like overtly bready like you would expect from like a wheat beer mm -hmm. it, it tastes like you're walking past a bakery you know on that last sip i got just a little bit of sweetness finally i'm gonna I'm do not getting any any sweetness check pilsners are all malt beers meaning they're not brewed with any adjuncts such as corn or rice and wheat or any other grain than malted barley so barley only mm. So they use Saz hops and will have much more hop character than an American Pilsner or a German Pilsner. See, I'm not crazy. That was a lie. Oh! Yay. That makes me, it's, cool. it's always nice when you like look up stuff and you're like, oh, hey. Like, hey, it's what I I'm said it was. I'm not insane. Yes. Like Adam and Eve, Isaac and Ishmael, Mao and Confucius, good and evil, day and night, hit titties. <laughs> Does that say hit titties? I sure hit tights. So. I think it says hitites. And Visigoths, John and Lorena, or Groucho and Mo, ales and lagers are as different as can be. Still, we must love each other for who they are, separately but equally, with liberty and justice for all. Cheers. I don't even know what that's supposed to be, but I love it. So, something before going way too far into this. We are not professionals, by no. any means. We are just... Beer fans. Successful beer drinkers. Yes. We drink lots. 
the next one that we're doing is Flafly Pale Ale. Thank you for saying it because I can't say it. So I think this is interesting that a pale ale is an amber beer, which always sounds odd to me, but it's because at the time that they became popular, they were being compared to brown porters. So this was England in the 16th century. So, yeah, so got like a real amber color to it. It's Mostly like small you, bubbles. You would think that, like, yeah, you would think you'd want it to be really uniform, but it's interesting you actually want it to be rocky. Right. The uniformity so, is is part of mass production. This doesn't super, mean mass produced beer is bad. No, we but, drink plenty of mass produced beer. Yes, we do. And plenty so, of bad beer, too. Hey, I love my Rolling Rock. Okay, no judgment. Some hipster just lost his wings. He lost his, his man button. I hate it when a hipster loses his man button. <laughs> oh, definitely bready. Mm-hmm. It tastes or it smells like um the the dough you made for St. Patty's Day the uh, soda. Oh bread. yes, it t- it smells like soda bread. Honestly, and it smells like kind of the sweetness of the Guinness dipping sauce that I made mm-hmm. too. So it's like it's because it's got that carameliness. Mm. That's good. That's good beer. It's that's so not, funny. It that's like, not helpful criticism. That's no. not like it doesn't really tell you, it but it's like. it's good. This is good beer. It's got a little Which bit more of that. Uh, it's got a little bit more of that coats your mouth. Yeah, like a uh, heavier mouth feel. Mm-hmm. It's got like such a small bit of sweet tanginess, like not a tartness. I think you're getting like two different flavors there and combining them because what I'm getting, I'm getting like a caramel. Yeah, it's like definitely, kind of like definitely the caramel. caramel. Yes, but then on top of that, there is like an orange. Yes, zest. like uh, right as you orange, said but. that, it's like a very light. Orange, not lemon kind of citrus. So apparently 16th century brewers created these amber beers by using a form of coal called coke. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. I wonder we like this so much. To roast their grains. So it this kind of coal burns hotter than wood, but it doesn't give you the foul odors that coal does. So they, it would give this, like, you know, these caramel malts, but it was... A paler thing than the brown porters at the time, so that's why these are pale ales. Not a little bit of haze. A little bit of haze. Not much. I mean, more than the pills for sure. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Beer. Oh, hey, look at what? Beer. Mm. Yeah. I need to try more pale ales in the future too. Oh, we didn't talk about the the bubbliness. The uh, pilsner was more bubbly, so. Yeah. Not by a ton. No. Neither of them were super bubbly. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know it's St. Louis. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Go St. Louis. Awesome. No, fuck St. Louis. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> fuck your arch. <laughs> that arch ain't nothing. Can't go to the west, my ass. <laughs> this one, I'm gonna show it off. Vanna White. I am Vanna White. So, I am Beyonce always. I am Beyonce always. <laughs> you are Beyonce always. So that is the Amber Bach Lager and from Casey Beer. It says, uh, silky smooth, caramel and honey malt flavors, moderate bitterness. Okay. So this sounds like it's going to be something that's like super middle of the pack kind of. A little bitter, pretty sweet. It's kind of what I'm expecting. Mm-hmm. So we'll get the, get the pour video. Get the pour. <laughs> yeah, boy. It's a pretty color. That looks pretty on par with the last one. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's like a, a teens, tad bit darker? Maybe a teens. I was thinking the teens lighter. I'll have to see it. In, I don't know. Post maybe. We yeah, maybe. It post. I mean, it's it pretty looks, much the same. Right off the bat, you can tell it's not nearly as carbonated yeah, as the I was last gonna two. Because there's it's, next to no head. You don't know that much about head? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, if somebody gave me more. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Drink your fucking beer. <laughs> But no, it's just very like thin layer next to no scent at all. I'll be curious to try it, to taste it, because this already makes me think of like a lighter version of the last beer. Because it does, it smells similar, like a sweet readiness, Mm -hmm. and it's a similar color. Oh, hit me with that tang though. Flavor wise, not similar at all. No, not much hoppiness. Yeah. Very malty. It's almost very like a, malty. yeah, malty. 
it's almost got like a, it's not sour, but it's almost got like a. It's got a twinge of, of sourness? that. Uh, I want to say it's it's malty and bitter. I want to almost say like a really faint banana y. So I'm getting a lot of orange it's peel again, but I see what you, there's like a sweeter f- light fruit behind it. Yeah, it's weird. L- it literally tells you you're supposed to get a caramel and honey malt flavor. I could get the honey. I get malt. I, I wouldn't say I get either of those though. What, what you, you taste, taste is what you taste. What you taste is what you taste, yeah. whether or not it's suggestion or not. Like yeah. if you're not making it up, making it up, words are hard. Not very bubbly. I'm really trying to find that fruit. So I'm not sure if it might be it might be a fruit I've not had before. You were starting to talk about the mouthfeel. It's very dense. Yeah, dense is a good word for it. Like it, it's, it's very he- heavy. Not not in flavor, but it's yeah, just the a very flavor light. kind of goes away. That that was kind of the thing that was confusing me. The flavor doesn't last super long. It's why I keep like drinking it, trying to f- right. chase what that flavor is. But the actual like feeling of the beer sits on your tongue for right. a long time. Makes me all mush mouth. Which, which, from my experience, is a lager thing. I'm much more of an ale person than a lager. That's Beer kind of the be. funny thing about us doing this especially is like we're very much like we want to experience nice flavors, but also sometimes you just want to get drunk. Julian. Yeah. So, so we're officially Whoa, halfway through. We're halfway there. Wow, wow. So now we're not. <laughs> so I was pretty certain about those first three. Okay. We're now moving on into the danger zone. Half of this tasting that I'm significantly less sure about. <laughs> so less sure why. So I, I'm fairly sure about the IPA. Oh, shoot. We should have saved a little bit and put them all into one beer. No, we shouldn't have. <laughs> That's fair. I thought about that and immediately regretted the thought. <laughs> <laughs> so IPAs have like this intensity of flavor of like a darker, more intense beer mm-hmm. with the drinkability of a light beer. Mm-hmm. Which, which, is, I think, which is why they're yeah. super popular right now. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So Stone IPA is self-described on their on stonebrewing.com as the IPA that launched generations of hop fanatics. There's a fucking like there's a good story whole on this story one. on the back. This is the IPA that initiated Stone Brewing's reputation for hops and exposed a budding world of craft beer enthusiasts who are bold style as an emerging brewery. Distinguished by bright hop fruitiness. It's an interesting thing I've heard connected a lot, and I never really get it. But the the connection between hops and fruit. I think they're saying that the hoppiness is a fruit. Kind of. Are you sure about that? I think they're connecting hops as a fruit. A piney vibrancy and pronounced tantalizing bitterness. So complex tropical aromas. Full disclosure: I already took a sip, and oh shit, the tasting notes they gave you there. I do so, get it. I get it. This has been sitting for a minute, but almost no head. Almost no foam. It's got the right amount. I, I don't want to say skunkiness because that naturally sounds bad, but IPAs have like a skunkiness to them. Yes. I mean, that is got, what hoppiness is to me, is a level of skunkiness. It's got the Any right amount. Any pot fan loves skunkiness. Oh, that's so. true. That's true. I wonder if... I wonder if that's why like IPAs have become more popular. It's like now that like weed is more mainstream. Because weed's getting more mainstream, maybe. I, I know it sounds ridiculous, but I wonder if that's true. Anyway, I should probably taste this now. I'm getting a lot of get a lot of pepper in that. Good amount of pepper. I don't get the flavor of pepper, but I get like the the feel of pepper. Yeah, I feel like I've been hit with pepper. Bright hop fruitiness, piney, piney. That's what, definitely that's, piney. In fact, that's what I'm saying. It's not pepper, it's pie. It doesn't hit you with the, the hoppiness bitterness. too much up front. It's like it almost like lures you into it, and then it's like just kind of a, as, as it goes, it's waving by with bitterness. Mm-hmm. I'm not the biggest IPA guy, but this is pretty good. I really like this, yeah. Well, apparently it is the IPA. I like this, and I don't like 
if it classifies itself as a New England IPA, I'm not a fan. What I've found though is there's a when they describe a beer as a wet, like in New England IPAs are typically described as very wet. That mouthfeel is weird to me. Apparently West Coast IPAs are known for the huge hop aroma, which definitely definitely huge hop. Bursting with notes of citrus and tropical fruits. I, I didn't think about the tropical fruits thing. I'm gonna try. I don't get it in the taste, but like just before I took a sip, I kind of got the tropical fruits thing. Yeah, this one's definitely more like lemon than it is orange. Like yeah, this is compared for sure to how lemon. the other ones were. Um, I'm getting like a like a dragon fruit almost. With West Coast IPAs, their malt character is understated. Definitely, I don't get like any malt in no. this, and they finish dry to let the layered hop flavors and aromas take center stage. The mouthfeel and the flavor don't last too long after. There's like a real subtle bitterness that lasts longer, but other than that, it doesn't like sit on your tongue. But I think the nice thing is so far we've had four good beers. So now it's on to her two favorite. So what's funny is this is actually, okay, the look up I'm the most excited for the porter and the, the sour. So this is the long route peanut butter porter. I grabbed this one because I saw peanut butter porter and visions of Reese's cups went through my head. I hope it's that. When I think of like lighter beers like Pilsners and and, uh, and lagers, it's like you're going outside, you're hanging with your friends at a barbecue, you know, at a tailgate, stuff like that. You don't drink porters and stouts in, in that setting. You drink porters and stouts when you're, like, at a nice restaurant. You're getting yes. a good meal. Unless you're a drunk Irishman. Unless you're a drunk Irishman. Brewed with lactose sugar, aged this porter in fresh roasted cocoa nibs, and then add a touch of artificial peanut butter flavor. With delightful aroma of peanut butter cup. Maybe I will like this, because I freaking Reese's is my favorite candy of all time. As it should be. As it well should be. <laughs> Maintains a porter backbone with twisting layers of chocolate, peanut butter, and toast. Here's what I want to like us to sort of look out for. Obviously, the peanut butter, but like malty breadiness and milkiness. I'll be interested to see if we can taste. So before we taste, so not um, much. It it had better head. It did. It did. Not a whole lot of different bubbles. Not a whole lot of rockiness. It was pretty Dude. Good. Oh, there's peanut butter in there. But it's like, it's not as, jar it's not as like jarringly peanut butter as I thought it would be. Like, I get the chocolate. It's peanut so butter much. and like a coffee. I get a coffee from coffee. it. Coffee. Yeah, like a yeah. coffee chocolate. Oh, God. That's good. Oh, it's really good, but yeah, it's intense. It is, it is peanut butter and coffee. Like, yeah. right in your face. Yep. That's like a, yeah, peanut butter it's, in it's, your coffee. You were making a sandwich. You dropped like a spoonful of peanut butter in your black coffee, and you went, eh, fuck it. It's got next to no bitterness. Pretty smooth. It kind of, like, it hits me, like, three different ways as I drink it. Like, it's super. It's It's, like. Right on the front, it's peanut butter. It's, it's, pe it's like licking a spoonful of peanut yeah. butter almost. Mm. Cover all 9,000 taste buds. And then taking a sip of coffee, mm -hmm. like right behind it. And then at the end, it just tastes like a good porter. Yeah. Like, it's like they those both, both kind of fall off. off really fast. And then it's and just then. sort of the maltiness at the very back end of it. But it's not super heavy. It doesn't. No, this is pretty light like, drinking. Yeah. It mm. doesn't like sit on your tongue. It's not like drinking syrup. Like, as far as, like, porters and stouts that I've had, this is probably the lightest one. Yeah, like, as far as, like, mouthfeel kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm pleasantly surprised at how drinkable this is. This tastes like it'd be really good with some ice cream. Really, the only kind of information it has on here is this quote, which is, we are all on the path precisely where we need to be. It's almost <laughs> like, hey, hey, do you feel like you're making bad choices? It's okay. <laughs> did you buy us did you buy this beer because you're making a poor choice 
I, I, I really like that. I really do too. And I was That's super nervous show. about this. Like was I was good, very, I was a scared. Roxy has stepped away for a moment, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and get us started on the next one. This is sipping pretty fruited sour. I think sours are funny. They're, they're kind of like the most contentious group of beers, but I love sours. But what I found is you can say you like sours and find sours you hate because they're just so wild with different flavors. It's pretty pale for a It's like sour. grape. It's like ruby grapefruit. I don't think I will like this drink, but I am in love with their design for it. It's <laughs> so cool. Here. I don't think we did this with the last one. I think that it's so it was, hazy. It was a porter. It's, it's uh, only micro bubbles. There's no big bubbles. There, there's a very even level to it. It's a ruby red fruited sour brewed with a unique blend of fruit and balanced with a touch of pink sea salt. So this is what it says it has in it. Guava, acai, elderberry, and pink Himalayan sea salt. I can't talk. I think people will think that the salt is weird. This beer pops with a bright ruby color and a refreshing tart finish. Sit back, relax, and sip on something pretty. So Right on the nose, you get the, the guava, like a lot. I don't want to see how your reaction. That is, you know I what? like it. I like it a lot. I like it. I wouldn't call this a sour. It's very not sour. It's so... I have no words for it. Like, it's so... So, a, a lot of sours mellow. give you almost like that warhead, super sour. This is very much just a clean fruit. Think of like a, yes. a very tart fruit. This is that. Yeah, this isn't like a citrus punch you in the face sourness. It's a tart fruit. Fruit sourness. Mm. Nice. Wow. Mm. You do get the salt out of it too. Mm -hmm. like, the salt's it's, awesome. It it's, is it's great. bordering on being too much without being too much. I think it's great. I think this salt really like it. I think it's taming the rest of the sour. Yeah, it really is. This was the one I was looking forward to the least because I was like, I. And now you're like, that's a good beer. It is. Like, I don't think I would drink. This isn't like a super, like, drink a ton of it beer. This is a one to this two. This is like you get, like, one, maybe two. Yeah. But it's super approachable. Honestly, this would be great for somebody that had never had a beer. It doesn't really taste like a beer. It's not really a I was, beer. I was going to say, I was going to say, if I was approaching someone who had never had a sour, I think this would be a good start. I don't know. I wouldn't, would give good... the, I wouldn't give this to somebody that never had a sour because then their their expectation of a wrong. sour would be wrong. I want to get more of this. I'm so disturbed <laughs> by the fact that I want more of this. I don't know like, if anyone's watching this for like a recommendation, but I'd recommend every all six we drank today. I would absolutely but recommend everyone. Good. It's like a beer and a cocktail had like some weird baby that wasn't raised by either of them. <laughs> you know, you get a lot. Uh, I actually, I don't know what a sigh is, but. It's like get, a tart berry. Okay. I, cause I get the guava a lot. I get the elderberry on the back end, kind of the like more neutral sweetness. So what's funny is the only one of those that I know to identify really is the acai because we had it when I worked at Starbucks and I do get a lot of that. It's like, it feels like it's such a good balance of everything. Mm -hmm. This I, is the first one out of all these. I think I can pick out every single thing. Yeah, they told yeah, me to for sure. The salt too. Like usually when things add salt, it sort of just enhances the flavors. It, you don't really notice the salt itself. It just sort of is like the thing that's like amplifying the other flavors. This one, you can actually taste the salt. Salt is a way of life. And it fits in perfectly. It tastes like a refreshing, like, Hawaiian day. You know what? I wish, though, I wish it was colder and bubblier. The colder is probably just because we did it last. We had these all Yeah, that's the which is totally fair. But I wish it was a little bubblier. Bubblier, yeah. I feel like it could work even better bubblier. I totally agree. I'm so surprised. Like, I want to go get more of it. And it's so weird. Well... 
could do the. It's uh, only one ten in the morning. We could go. We could do the six the six pack tasting of just it next video. Just it. <laughs> yes, They're like we're not this on our one, fourth one. This, one, I'm this is our fourth sipping pretty, and let me tell you, I'm sipping pretty right now. Let's do like a brief overview of the ones that we had. So we want to do like a little wrap up. A little wrap up. Okay, so, so we've now had all six. What was your favorite? Your uh, biggest surprise and your least favorite. My biggest surprise was obviously was the sip and pretty. I was so expecting a sour, like warhead sourness, and I was it was so good. It was so not that. It was not punch you in the face sour. It was like it was like tart fruit sour mm. to where you're just like, oh. Yep. Okay, your biggest surprise. So uh, my biggest surprise. I'm actually going to go with the long route. Also, that would be my second choice. Because I was expecting a very, like, chemically added peanut butter. Yeah. Flavor. It was added tastefully. And, and it, it really surprised me with how smooth it made it. So what's the next one you want to know? Probably go with my most favorite. Most favorite. The Lagunitas Pills was, like, it was super drinkable, but with the flavor of an IPA. Out of all of them. Wow. That one right there. I'm, You're so pretty. So you it's are funny. Sipping pretty. For me, I like like all the other types of beers. A bad one, a good one. The window is kind of narrow. I cannot drink a bad sour. A good sour really stands above. I, I feel like everything else didn't stray super far out of what I expected from it, but that one totally blew its category. Yeah. All right. Lastly, your least favorite. We've we've said before all six of these beers really good. If I had to pick my least favorite of the six, it'd probably be the Maybach. Just because it was kind of more understated mm -hmm. and so it kind of just was like a little bit forgettable. It was still a great beer. Of of these six, I'd agree. Yeah. My same. least favorite was this one. It's Dang not it. a bad beer at all. It's a great beer. Sorry, Casey. But um, one thing I noticed is it said it was supposed to be a few different things, and all I got was like a harsh malt. Yeah, that was the one that we kept trying to find the banana or the fruit or whatever. We the kept hell trying to find these different kept flavors, and all we it, kept getting was just, malt. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah, we, we should, should totally do, that do again. it again. Like, Yay. Like daily? I mean, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Support Beer local breweries. And stuff. Craft breweries. You guys are awesome. Support your local breweries. Yes. So uh, next time we should do all locals. All locals. All I local love craft. it. With channel names still to be determined. I'm Roxy. I'm Corey. Feeling